space itself um, interests me. Something that I've been thinking about a lot is what Frank Stella wrote about, kind of like the Baroque space and that uh, abstraction needed to consider uh, what happened so much earlier that you know took uh, Renaissance painting to you know what Caravaggio did and it's kind of like this new wild space. I think space is like this kind of wild accessible thing. The, the landscape that I'm depicting here is something like this is kind of like from memory of these sand dunes across Nevada and from Nevada um, and I think part of that uh, experience of growing up in a kind of a spare desert environment is it, it has influenced what I continually returning, I return to image-wise. This particular piece is called Vertical Water. It's set up like a hanging scroll and I really like this format. I don't complete that many of them. They're, they're, they're hard because you know the eye can't take in the whole thing but it, that kind of difficulty is also one of the advantages of working this way because I, what I've depicted is water in various ways that kind of climbs, hence the name Vertical Water. So, this is like this ocean horizon, really referring to abstraction a lot. So this is kind of like, you know, a looser, looser area, but this kind of climbs into another depiction of water and it just kind of moves down. And this is, this is um, you know, I think a really good example of how I work. And so this is where I spend a lot of my time um, making most of the work that's smaller in scale, even the, like the larger vertical one that's narrow that I can pull across the table I will, I will work with. Um, I use, you know, primarily watercolor and I play around with all sorts. I allow a lot of spills to emerge. Usually that starts on the floor. I just spill, I take a lot of this muddy uh, kind of re residue from all the watercolor, you know, and I just kind of let it, let it spill. And that sets up a sense, a, 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 you know, a bunch of variables that I have to put together as the picture that I want. This is one I finished last week. I worked on it for about a week and a half really, really intensely. It's very complicated. I have had somebody introduce me as a, a maximalist pushing towards minimalism. I think this one's just full on maximalism. I want the work, uh, the viewer to have all these discoveries that keep amassing over time. So you never really feel like you know everything about the piece. Digital technology is something that I, I mean, I don't, consciously think of it and in making my work but I use it in, uh, I rely on it heavily as a tool. This is an example of like okay I think it, it's finished but I also want to see does it do some of the things that I want when I turn it around so like I'll rotate this horizontally um, I'll ro rotate it uh, vertically and the other thing that I really like doing is taking it to grayscale you know what what happens when you eliminate color do we push deep enough into it. This is my corner of work in progress. I haven't made that many pieces this large. I've made probably uh, about four of them. They're much, I want to have the densities, they're much harder because I want the densities to happen on the scale. Human or larger, slightly larger than human scale is something that I really want to push. You can kind of see the wall below. It, it is, I'm lifting perfectly as a point part of my studio because I've done, prior to this, I did this large 30 foot wall installation at the drawing center in 2005, which is kind of a lot of the residue that's here in the, in the studio. Um, so this is a, a, offers a good example of how these things happen. These, you know, I use a lot of tape and I'm just kind of building up tape here that um, I allow spills, you know, because when it dries under that tape, it's just uncontrolled and these kind of like great lines that you kind of can't quite create anyway. This piece is a large scale piece that, you know, I hope to eventually finish, but I think it's kind of great if I flipped it. It started, started the other way. Uh, what's nice about it is it's something I started more than a year ago and it's just going to accumulate over time and um, it may take on a very different flavor than the other pieces, but maybe not. But I, I think what I really like is, I mean, all painting is a, uh, a portrait of time, but this is kind of a more extended uh, portrait. I didn't have much background in art growing up coming from um, Nevada. I went to Stanford, and I think that was where my eyes opened up to a much larger world. I moved directly from grad school to New York with the kind of odd, but not surprising, ambition of showing at Mary Boone. Um, and I thought that would be no problem. Um, so that didn't really work out um, at all. And um, I was, after about a, six months, I was temping at night. and. Um, didn't realize that's probably not a good time to temp as an artist because 
you really do need to go out and meet um, the art world, and that's usually at openings at night. Most of my exhibition experience has taken place since I became the full-time artist. Um, and uh, some highlights for me were, I think the highlight was showing at the Drawing Center, and there I was um, allowed to do this 30-foot wall installation that was all um, incorporated uh, 10 pieces. It was called the Regeneration Wall, um, and the pieces were like a family tree of works where I took an element of a piece and created the next one. Um, and then shortly after that I had a show, a solo show, Jeff Bailey. I mean, kind of a public presence, not, you know, not like huge, but some people know me as Franklin Evans and they know that work a little bit. Nobody really knows my background. I'm also Franklin Garcia and that's my mother's, uh, my mother's Mexican. So it's a very different artist. Um, uh, Franklin Garcia, even if it's the same work, it gets read differently. And so I'm thinking about that more deliberately. Um, and some of the work, you know, is, is populated with some uh, references to uh, Latin American art. Appropriation is a really consistent uh, mode of operating because as a, you know, just on the personal level, you're kind of adopting all these things that are kind of dissimilar and becoming this collection of you know, oneness that gets read as oneness, sort of. The things that I talked about in the studio are largely my interests. Um, as I mentioned, um, I'm becoming interested in thinking how I can uh, put a little bit more of my personal self, putting this more current, present issue of like thinking about you know the construction of Franklin Evans versus Franklin Garcia.